Another win for Santa Clara women's soccer in the NCAA tournament. The Broncos on to the Elite Eight. Welcome into another edition of Bronco Chat. David Gentile here in California, joined by Alex Loetta virtually from Cary, North Carolina. Alex, thanks for taking the time. Really solid run for your group in the tournament thus far. You take down Arkansas 2-0 in the third round. Tell me what you saw from your team in that win over the Razorbacks. Yeah, thank you, David, for having me. Um, obviously, we've never played the Razorbacks before, so it was definitely a new experience. And um, they play a very different playing style than we do. We're very possession oriented, um, and they tend to like to kick the ball in and hope for the best, flick it on and try and um, get a goal that way. So it's definitely difficult to handle their playing style, obviously, especially for a defender, um, the ball's flying at you and their entire team's flying at you. So um, it was definitely a challenge for our defense to handle, but I think we did a fantastic job. Marley came up with a couple big saves. Uh, Marissa Bubness was on a one-on-one -on -one and ended up not letting them score. And so it was really awesome. Um, Eden White played great. I just think our defense handled it really well. And it was obviously a cherry on top to have our um, attackers score and Skyler score that amazing goal. So um, I think we handled the Razorbacks pretty well. Um, and yeah, we're looking forward to keep going. That very fast paced offense, aerial balls direct, and you could see it right from the jump. As you put it before we started the interview, they were sprinting at you. Yeah. for the first 10 minutes of the match. So tactically, what do you have to do defensively to effectively handle all of that pressure early on? Yeah, it's it's definitely a lot of stepping and dropping. Um, so it's trying to catch them off sides, but as soon as like the ball is played, you drop. Um, so it, it requires a lot of communication between our... Um, we played a three center back system. We played a three, five, two. And so um, it took a lot of communication for our three center backs to be on the same page um to step and drop at the right times but something that was super key for us was winning the second and the third ball um so when the when they did play the ball into us we cleared out try to do a head pass if we can clear it towards somebody if we can but really our our key was to win the second and the third ball just because arkansas likes to jump all over and take any chances that they can with those balls so um it was it was good. Our defense handled it really well. We just headed it out, tried to head it towards somebody. And if we couldn't, then we deal with it. But um, just communication was super important in stepping and dropping. Um, but our our defensive line has been so on point and in tune with each other. So it wasn't I wasn't worried going into the game that we were going to struggle too much with it. Yeah, let's stay in that room talking about the defense. What makes this such a stout defensive group in the sense that you put up really good numbers in the regular season and you've only given up one goal in the two tournament games so far. Yeah, I think it's just, we know the importance of winning our 18 box um, in these tournaments. Jerry always, he's a huge numbers guy. So he likes to talk about how a lot of the games are decided on dead balls or corner kicks um, or in the biggest five moments, which is the first five minutes of each half. Um, and the biggest five is what's considered the five minutes before going into halftime. Um, so just kind of having our defense have that in mind um, has been super helpful. Um, it's super important that we have extra focus and attention to detail when um, we're in those moments and especially free kicks and dead balls for an Arkansas team who loves just playing the ball in. Um, so I think our, our team handled it really well and didn't give up any silly fouls or um, unnecessary corners, which was um, part of our game plan for this game. So going forward, just keeping our, um, our center backs and our outside backs in tune and the communication is going to be um, super key. And you mentioned a couple of big saves from Marley. She had some nice stops, including one where she had to come out, make a save, and rush back to the line, make a second save. Yep. It's her first year starting, but it's her third year at Santa Clara. What have you seen out of Marley in net in her first year of action? Yeah, she's just a whole different situation. And it's been awesome to see her handle this adversity and then her first year come and do so amazing. She 
I don't know if you remember, but in the BYU game, made this diving save that was clearly going in the goal and would have tied up the game. And she just, she's just incredible. And her ability is insane. And so far I've seen just so much perseverance out of her and mental toughness. And I think she is such a huge part of our defense as well. Just having her voice behind all of us kind of um, orchestrating everything is just she's she's taken on the role of a leader in the goal and I think she's just flown with it and she's done so well so far um so I'm really excited to see her future and kind of the next four years still or three years for her since she's only had one so yeah she's definitely she definitely has a huge um and bright future for her yeah great shot stopper sure can fly in the net and make more than a handful of highlight caliber saves so that indeed has been fun to watch for this season Yes. Well, the start of that match against Arkansas was delayed by more than an hour because of weather. And then you had to wait for Clemson and UCLA to finish up their PKs. So how did the team spend the extra time? What do you do to stay loose and be ready to go once you figure out when your kickoff time is? Right. So previously you mentioned Jerry's optimal arousal, which he always talks about. Um, so that was super key in this weather delay. Um, a lot of the girls have never had a weather delay and due to lightning, obviously, since I'm from Colorado, I've had plenty of weather delays, uh, but it was, it was definitely a challenge for our team, um, but we were just in the bus and enjoying each other's company, staying in the moment. Um, it, was, it was easy to kind of get a little sidetracked and start focusing on other games like Georgetown and TCU were also in PKs. Um, and then obviously UCLA and Clemson were about to go into PKs. And so it's, it's, it's hard to not let your mind wander and start thinking about those things. But uh, our team did a very, very good job of staying focused on our game. Um, we did have a little momentary lapse in judgment and wanted to do karaoke, but Jerry <laughs> made sure that we stayed focused, which was um, super helpful and important, obviously, when you're in a weather delay to continue to focus and um, do all the right things. And I think our team did a, a really good job. So it was, an, it was a good moment. And staying present in the moment, too, was something for as huge for our team this season. Um, and so everyone was just trying to stay present in the moment in the bus, enjoy each other's company, but also stay dialed in. Well, you've been named WCC Defensive Player of the Year each of the last two seasons, you hadn't played center back before you got to college. And we've talked about that transition before, but I'm curious to know recently, say within the last month or maybe the course of this season, what has been the latest piece of development for you as you continue to work your way into this role? Yeah, like you said, I've never obviously played center back until I got here. So it's been very challenging. Um, and at first, being a center mid and loving that position, I was like, oh, I don't like center mid. But <laughs> now that I've been playing it for three years and having such a great um, defensive line to play with, I think something that I've really tried to embrace, and especially here at the tournament, is just kind of my voice and how vocal I can be. Because a couple times we've had some games where it went quiet because we weren't playing our best. And those are the times when you need a voice the most, whether it's comforting or um, constructive, you just have to have communication. And I think that's something that I have really honed in on and really tried to um, do my best with. And especially in these tournaments, like with freshmen, we have like three or four freshmen that are starting. And so with them and even the sophomores who have only been there a couple times, it's it's a whole different experience and a whole different ball game than um, regular season games. So I've really tried to be kind of that voice for the team. And especially since Soak's injury, she's been, she's a huge, huge vocal leader on our team, like ha hands down the best vocal leader on our team. And it's been awesome to learn from her. Um, but it's been a struggle since she's taken her injury to kind of have have that voice. So I've been trying to um, kind of adopt that role and um, do my best in being that vocal leader. So it's definitely something I've been focusing on and will continue to focus on um, throughout the tournament. 
and you're able to draw from your experience winning at least one tournament match in, in each of the last three years coming into this season, winning two tournament matches this year. As you look back on your entirety of the experience so far in the NCAA tournament, what's been your favorite part of it all? Yeah, I would say, which is weird, especially because we are in COVID. Um, but I would say that this year has definitely been my favorite experience, um, which is, like I said, weird, just because we're in a bubble and you wouldn't think that this year of, of all years would be my favorite. But first of all, we're in the Elite Eight and I haven't done that in all four of my years. So obviously this is one of my favorites. But another part is just, the NCAA committee did such a good job with their matchups. And I think that helps that we're all consecutively in the same area and teams that don't, wouldn't usually play each other are playing each other. We've never played Ohio state. We would have never played Ohio state. We've never played Arkansas and there's just such good matchups going on right now and so many overtime and PK games. And it's, it's really fun to watch, but also be a part of, um, and obviously, like I said, we're in the Elite Eight and we've never done that before. So it's, it's, it's been a really fun experience and kind of being in this hotel and having a whole floor to ourselves up at the top floor. Um, like yesterday, I went up there and they were playing Mario Kart because our trainer, Sean, brought his Switch. And so it's just kind of finding different things that are keeping us entertained and we're right in downtown. So there's a lot of cute little coffee shops and our team loves coffee. So it's just been a really fun experience. And although we're in a bubble and we can't see a lot of people and hug our families that are out here, it's been, it's been challenging, but it's definitely been a growing moment. And yeah, it's just been my favorite tournament so far. Well, next up for you is Clemson on Sunday. And for, for context for everybody watching, it's Friday morning here in California, early afternoon, back on the East Coast. So at this point in the prep process, you're a little more than 48 hours away from the match. What have you seen so far out of Clemson? What stands out about this Tiger team? Yeah, so they're, they're it seems like they're a possession oriented team as well. So that's gonna be a good soccer game um, as Jerry likes to call it. Like that's good soccer is when teams play possession. So it's definitely gonna be challenging and they do have some um, pretty pacey forwards for our um, back line to be aware of. Um, their center back really likes to look for that long ball and she can hit it very far and pretty accurate. So that's definitely something that we're gonna be aware of and stepping and dropping again, like I said. Um, but it's definitely gonna be a good matchup and I'm really excited since I've never played Clemson. So um, don't really know what to look for, but we'll find out in our meeting um, later today about it. So. Looking forward to it. Broncos and the Tigers, it's Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, winner to the College Cup. Santa Clara's Alex Loera. nice to catch up with you again and all the best for the rest of the tournament. Yeah, thank you so much, David, and looking forward to it.